right, we are on air. <laughs> and little Olive down here is, is lurking. <laughs> Ollie. Waiting for the perfect time. Ollie. Hey, Olive. Oh, are you, do you want to be part of a podcast? <laughs> do you want to be part of the podcast? <laughs> I could say oh, like, you do? Oh. You want to be Straight. part of the podcast? Oh. You want to be part of the podcast? <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> this is the most friendly she'll ever be to public people, so it's good. <laughs> hey, cutie. Uh, All right. Oh. Um, what's the, what's are we the still saying it's, name? This is Olive, and Hildy is somewhere. I, I saw sure. Hildy like pop it up in the background, like, where are my pets? Come on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Are we introducing it as Thursday? Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think we did that on the last one. All right. And we're talking App Store and what else? Where's our where's our rundown? Uh, Lori. Go. I got yeah. it. Okay. I got it. Cool. Um <laughs> Our rundown is empty. That's great. Uh-oh. And this is working, so maybe it'll... No, no, our rundown's empty. I see it on the... Okay. Oh, Lori shared a link uh, to a shared uh, oh. note. Oh, the note. There. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, Lori, can you send me that link again? Just tell me what what's in it, and then we'll go for for the intro. We'll go uh, the December second bug, iOS eleven point two, Apple Pay Cash. Um, that's cool oh. and good enough. <laughs> All right, Olive, you want to come up here, sweetie? Come here, come here. You want to be part of the intro? Come on, <laughs> Ollie. You want to be part of the podcast? Olive, <gasps> hello, Ollie. <gasps> okay. <laughs> All right, we'll get ready. It is Thursday, December 7th, 2017. I'm Serenity Caldwell here with iMore, and today we are going to talk about Apple's unfortunate big problem, iOS 11.2, Apple Pay Cash, the App Store end of year, and much, much more. Joining me today, besides my lovely dogs hiding out in the background, is, uh, of course, iMore Deputy Managing Editor, Lori Gill. How are you doing, Lori? Very good, thank you. And how are you today? Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm I'm enjoying this uh, this semi quiet morning with the dogs. Uh, also joining us today, uh, another dog lover, Micah Sargent, <laughs> senior editor at imore.com. How are you doing, uh, Micah? Oh, I'm doing great. My dogs are doing great. Um, I just wrapped, so to speak, on uh, getting my holiday decorations put together. So I'm really oh. pumped and getting festive. I want to know how many smart devices you used to set up your home decorations. Oh man, um, it's mostly smart plugs. Uh, yeah. I want to say uh, be- between three and five. I think I, I don't have an exact number, um, but yeah, certainly different different plugs are 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 being used outside and inside to make sure that everything can just be turned on and off with uh, a voice command or a f- uh, simple button push on uh, my my iPhone so I I love to incorporate those to make that simpler that was um, my big Christmas decoration smart home buy this year I bought two smart plugs one for the um, the Christmas tree and one for my outside Christmas lights. Unfortunately, I have literally not a single plug outside of my house. Oh no. I have to to string an extension cord from inside to outside. (laughs) It's ridiculous. So this year's gonna be great because I'll be able to set up times for it to start and stop and not have to worry about forgetting to turn the lights on. So I'm excited. That's always nice. You know, I haven't, I haven't purchased smart plugs yet for my Christmas lights. And I'm starting to think that maybe this is the year to do it. Uh, Especially because there are so many of them now. I remember this time Mm -hmm. last year, we really only had one or two and none of them were great. Uh, You know, I, 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 last year I still set my parents up with a Wemo plug. And I feel like we're in a completely different genre of home automation at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Uh, so, Micah, you, you set up with smart plugs. Is there anything else that you're using? If Philips Hue lights, are there, is there any Christmas-specific home automation stuff that people should be on the lookout that are actually, you know, worth buying? 
Um, uh, so you said worth buying, and now suddenly we're <laughs> that's in a whole the, different... That's the trick, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there is a, and I can't remember the brand of it, but it's you go to Amazon and you're pretty much inundated with uh, advertisements about this. Um, there is a light strand that is A-L-E-X-A -A enabled. Um, and so it's got you know a connection built right into it that allows you to use your echo device to communicate with it um that said seems a little gimmicky to me uh i would just rather buy a normal light strand and a plug and then get to use the plug after the holiday season is over um the, yeah yeah the, the specific ones aren't it doesn't make as much sense uh Especially because, as I was just noting, like you buy some products that work the rest of the year, and then you're not just suddenly spending money on this portion. Um, so there are special outdoor plugs that uh, the iDevices makes an outdoor plug. Um, I think Elgato uh, Eve lineup has an outdoor plug. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, they're, they're just uh, waterproof plugs. Um, and then of course, yeah, you can use uh, lights that offer some color painting essentially. And oh, what is the the cool triangular Triforce looking? Oh, well, um, the Nanoleaf. Yes, yes, the Nanoleaf would be I perfect. I want one of those so bad. They're very cool. Yeah. Oh man, now I, the only problem with the Nanoleafs, um, as much as I love them, the only problem with the Nanoleafs is that they don't offer, uh, they, like you can't, once you stick them on a wall, they're done. Yeah. <laughs> like they're stuck, they're <laughs> stuck. I mean, you can pry them off obviously cause they're, it's just 3M sticks, but, but at the same time, I'm like, come on Nanoleaf, like make it work. Right. Yeah. Let me reorganize these how I'd like them. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice yeah, to have exactly. easier to to remount them and move them around your house. You could make a little Christmas tree and then put it back in your office after the holidays. Right. Yeah. yeah, it would be really cool, I think. So Micah, those lights, they're called um, Light Rhapsody, just in case anybody is doing a search for them. I'm looking at it right now and I hear what you're saying that, you know, you could just get some smart plugs, but some of the things that, that uh, the Rhapsody, the Light Rhapsody, Rhapsody lights have are, um, theme changing so that you can have them for Valentine's Day, Mardi Gras, Christmas, um, and you can connect it through Bluetooth. Um, it's C9 bulbs, which those are my favorites. I love the C9s. I wanna decorate everything with them. I have really, really old C9s that are um, energy hogs and they, they burn hot and I'm always worried that I'm gonna burn my house down because I <laughs> use them inside. That's how much I love them. So oh even goodness. though, even though, yes, you're right, a smart plug is actually the best way to go if you're trying to save a little money but want to have smart decorations. But I am super into these uh, Light Rhapsody, which right now they are currently unavailable. So they must have sold out of them when they were doing that special um, by, by an Echo Dot Git, these Light, these Rhapsody, light Rhapsody strands. So I can't even buy them right now because I didn't go in on that deal that we talked about last week. Unfortunately, I just forgot about it and then it was over. So, yeah, because we talked about how you get an Echo Dot out of it, so you should definitely like take a take it up. Um, and in that case, like it, it sort of made sense because you could have given away the Echo as a as a Christmas gift or a holiday gift or something like that. So, um, yeah, I think that. There's, there are cases where it works, especially um, as a person who is, you know, has has a complete buy-in into the smart home ecosystem. Um, but I, I don't think that this should be necessarily your first uh, foray into smart home tech. Definitely, because you're spending, I think they're $25 on a strand of lights that, um, though you can, you know, change the theme, the theme and have it, you know, be Halloween or something like that. It's still, it's one thing, whereas a smart plug allows you to connect all of your, your Christmas lights um, or any other thing that plugs in and uh, set timers for them and um, use, you know, your uh, Echo or your Siri to turn them on and, on and off depending on what smart plug you use, so. Um, My favorite uh, smart plug of all time, of all time, um, is 26 bucks uh, at last check. It's the iDevices uh, smart switch is what they call it, but it, it's, it's a plug. And uh, there's a 
there's an article on iMore that talks all about that specific plug because it was basically an ode, a love letter to to this plug. Um, it's got the the outlet is on the side as opposed to the front, so you don't have this huge wall wart. Uh, it's got an LED strip running across the front of it that can you can change it to any color you want and brightness as well, so it works as a nightlight. Um, it's Wi-Fi as opposed to Bluetooth, so the connection is more stable. Uh, it's Oh, it also has energy monitoring, which some companies will try to charge extra for, even though that's a software thing. <laughs> like it's it's not a difficult ad, so they'll like sell two different versions: one that has monitoring and one that doesn't. Um, the iDevices one does. Uh, it's a, a fantastic plug, and over time, the price has decreased. Um, and so often whenever, you know, family and friends are asking, hey, I want to get into this whole thing, where do I start? Um, I usually go for an inexpensive, uh, fun light, or I go for this plug specifically. And for $26, it's a genuine steal. Um, it's, it's I've, I have now like four of them and they've all been reliable from day one uh never had an issue with connectivity even uh in switching between outlets and uh you know having that to having it needing to be wow that is not how that's worded having <laughs> to unplug it and then plug it back in you know a couple days later it still works just fine so you know makes the connection and so it's uh reliable and like i said looks better uh so it's awesome i i, I love that plug that's actually that's, awesome. really, that's a good recommendation i bought um over the black friday weekend um i home uh pl smart plugs were on sale for a really ridiculously low price so i bought two of them i'm very happy with them but the one thing that stands out that you said like a um, it's, you know, it's a big old plug that goes into your wall and on the iHome, you plug it into the front, not the side. So it really takes up a lot of space. You have like, to, what? yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I like the idea of a plug on the side. I think that's a really great idea. Yep. Smart, smart thinking from the folks at uh, iDevices. <laughs> and they also have um, one of the few HomeKit enabled in wall um outlets there there's Ooh. several companies that have uh actual you know in wall switches for replacing uh a, a regular light switch up and down with uh an actual home kit enabled or wi-fi connected or bluetooth connected uh device but this is an actual in wall switch and both of the plugs are uh separate home kit connection so you can wow. <laughs> you know, yeah plug in whatever you want and you can con or control each of them separately and uh it also has iDevices sort of signature night light dealy on the front as well so maybe you don't know this but it for that for the wall the one that's actually like a wall replacement plug could I then plug in, say, one of those three plug adapters and then have three different devices plugged into one and all three of them are on the one Siri or, or the that one HomeKit enabled uh, uh, plug? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you could plug in a surge protector into one that has like six switches and uh, control it that way um, because that, that gives you it's it's simply an on and off uh, thing. There's no dimming or anything like that. And so you could plug in whatever and however power is running, uh, each of those could be turned off. In fact, I just have a normal iDevices switch right now uh, with a, you know, a surge protector with all of the holiday lights I have in uh, our window box dealy. <laughs> I can't think of what that's called. Bay window. Yeah. Um, and all of those are running to an outlet, which is plugged into the iDevices switch. So I can just say, hey, turn off my holiday lights. And then all of the ones in the window will turn off and turn back on. That is so cool. <laughs> that's yeah, going to be like my next plan. investment. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. When I, when I, when we wire up everything in the next few days, that's the plan.
That's, oh man, so I'm, <laughs> that's one of the things that I'm not looking, well, there are many reasons I'm not looking forward to moving, but one of the things that I'm not looking forward to with moving is having to rewire things and un unwire them here and, and rewire them elsewhere. <laughs> Uh, All of the taping and the cord buddies and <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, it'll take forever, but it'll be worth it <laughs> for sure. Well, um, we, we shouldn't spend the entire podcast talking about the holidays as <laughs> as much fun as it could be. Uh, I I know there there are lots of cool techie things, uh, but <laughs> let's talk about issues with tech and maybe tech not going so uh, according to plan when it should be. Uh, and unless you're under a rock on December 2nd, you might have a clue of what I'm talking about. Uh, so, you know, App Apple has not had the best record lately when it comes to updates uh, with glaring security holes. And unfortunately, uh, their second to latest iOS update was no different. Uh, although this one came out a little bit after uh, the update appeared, which is to say that uh, in iOS, uh, what is it, 11.1 uh, and 11.11, uh, there was a fun little bug where on December 2nd, uh, as soon as it clocked over to midnight, if you had any apps that had local notifications, so those are the kinds of things used by timer apps, for instance, that pop up a little notification that doesn't have to route through the server. It might just be like, reminder, go and do this. Uh, so iOS had an issue where if those notifications popped up on December 2nd, it would crash the springboard which is your home screen and basically the top level of the operating system. And not only would it crash it once, it would crash it repeatedly. Uh, therefore, kind of not quite bricking your phone, but getting it into a pretty pretty awful situation, uh, which, of course, led, uh, led people who weren't yet uh, at the midnight mark to either try and turn back their clocks or turn off all <laughs> notifications. Uh, just, just a lot of, a lot of bad stuff, um, and it led to a, a, as of yet unheard of thing, I think, for Apple, which is pushing an iOS update on the weekend, on a Saturday, uh, to, to, to deal with this, which is, of course, the iOS 11.2 beta did not have this bug. Uh, I have no idea how that ended up getting in there in the first place, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so. It's also, and that led it's, it's so random. Like, why December 2nd? Why was that the day? <laughs> that, I mean, you know, it wasn't like, it's you know. It's a day past December 1st. It's not December 30th. <laughs> it's Wait, not 31st. the end of the year. Like, there's yeah. like it's just this really odd day that that would just suddenly come out of nowhere. Yeah. It's, it's my calendar. It's not the best, uh, especially, again, Apple. Unfortunately, Apple has gone from being a company who had a reputation for rock solid software, more or less, with a couple of issues here and there, to, to seeing some major bugs filter through uh, some pretty major software updates in the last, the last few weeks alone. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, this kind of does give more fuel to the fire for the po folks who are like, oh, Apple software quality is slipping. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm not gonna go that far. I'm not gonna say like Apple is doomed or anything like that. Like clearly, this was a, a big mistake, and I am sure that systems will be put in place to try and rectify this. Uh, and I will give Apple props for reacting quickly. Uh, but at the same time, it's just, it's concerning, uh, especially when you consider how many iOS devices are out there in the world. Uh, having my Mac have a potential you know, security flaw that gets caught quickly and resolved is one thing. Uh, having my iPhone, which I use pretty much uh, most hours of the day have mm -hmm. a bug that could shut it down. And the only reason I knew about it was because I was reading Twitter and happened to be on the West Coast. But heaven forfend, you know, you've already gone to bed by that point and then you wake up and your iPhone won't work and you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. You know, that's, I that's heard, kind of bug that's kind of unacceptable. I heard because Renee Ricci had sent a text message saying, turn off all your notifications before midnight. I was like, what is he talking about? And then I read the article that he wrote and I was like, oh my. And this was like yeah. 10 o'clock at night. Like I potentially could have been asleep at that point and woke up in the morning, just been, my phone is broken and I don't know what to do about it. And not known that there was, you know, a software update that fixed it. In fact, I think I saw on Reddit, a couple of people were, posting, my phone keeps crashing, what's wrong? And I, you know, they didn't know, they hadn't heard. And I don't know how bad it is, but how would you even 
be able to get to your settings to update to iOS 11.2 if you if your phone keeps crashing. I'm not sure how bad it was, but like I imagine that at first people just didn't know what to do before they were finally told to update your software. So you know maybe they wouldn't have even noticed that there was a, a software update. Though I guess uh, in some cases, if you have automatic updates turned on and your phone is plugged in, it, it might have just done it on its own. So yeah, thankfully this wasn't a bug serious enough where it just phone and then you got the phone and it's an appending notation you could uh, install but it's still yeah it's it's not a good look for Apple or for any software company um, and while I said I'm glad that they reacted so quickly and were able to push out of course the next version of iOS which you know had its own minor issues uh, which comes from pushing an iOS update out on the weekend when you're not really <laughs> intending to uh, it's still like I appreciate their quick response to this, but it's a it's a situation that no software manufacturer should ever find them themselves in. And the fact that Apple has found themselves in this situation twice in the last few weeks, it's just it's not it's not great. Uh, so if I have any wish list for 2018, it's uh, Apple get get your house in order. <laughs> yeah, get back, get back on your BS. Once. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we can we can wait. You know, the HomePod, for example, they said it would be out in 28 or 2017, and it's not. I'm fine. Wait, make it wait. Make us wait. I I yep. think any any Apple fan knows if it if it comes out late, that's more important than it coming out broken. So, yeah, don't send us software that has you know giant security holes in it. Do the extra research to make sure that that's not there before you even send it out. Even if that means you have to tell everybody they have to wait another month, it's worth it for all of us. Selfishly, Agreed. the thing that bothered me about this is I was you know worried that my family would be affected by it. Um, and the, the selfish part about this is. I am a, a proxy for Apple anytime something goes wrong with Apple tech. And so Michael, what did you yeah, do? Exactly. I mean, because, you know, I will obviously I, I like the Apple tech that I have and I will recommend that to family and friends as well. And so in a way, like it makes sense whenever I get blamed for issues that crop up. But the this is one of those where it's, I mean, as you were mentioning, like what happens whenever this sort of hits and then someone's going, what in the world? I can't figure out why my phone is restarting. And they might try, you know, a dozen things. And I know plenty of, of uh, friends who I, like they'll send me a question uh, about their phone and then I'll see the little badge on their settings app because they haven't updated to the latest version of iOS. How come you haven't updated, I'll ask? And they have, you know, 12 different reasons why they haven't. I'm like, I do, you should do that immediately, uh, always. Anyway, um, but in that case, like telling them, yeah, you should definitely update <laughs> would have been a bad thing <laughs> because yeah. then they're pushing it into one that has an issue. So that, like, it, it reflects poorly on me too, doggone it, Apple. Like, I trust you to do the right thing so that I don't get blamed for it, doggone it. <laughs> uh, Sadly. Yeah. Sadly. So speaking of iOS 11.2. Speaking of, yeah. So they released iOS, Apple released iOS 11.2 on a weekend, uh, which was uh, an immediate fix for this, for this December 2 bug. But it also brought along some really nice uh, additions for iOS users, including the eventual rollout of Apple Pay Cash. Oh boy, uh, I can now send cash to people from my Apple Pay account. I'm, you know what, Micah, can you explain Apple Pay Cash to me? <laughs> because I feel like Apple has done a terrible job on the messaging here. And I'm like, it's kind of like Square, but it's kind of like PayPal, but also it lives, uh, uh, I, yeah. The explain. way, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. The sort of information that's out there is not not good enough and there are uh if you've never used sort of a virtual cash deposit box before then there's no sort of thing to compare it to uh but basically how it works is you get set up um with with an apple pay cash card uh whenever you sign up for for apple pay cash uh, and, you and to be clear uh sorry micah to be clear it's not a physical card 
Exactly, yes. Uh, you go in, you flip a switch, and then you get this virtual card that exists in, in virtual space. And that card can be used as a real debit card in any place where Apple Pay is accepted. Uh, the way that you get money onto it and off of it is by connecting your bank account and then you, or your credit card, which also incurs fees. But you can add cash to this card and then use that card, sort of like a gift card balance, where if there's no money on the card, then it's going to get rejected. Like if you went to, to Starbucks and you had $2 left on your card, but you bought that $3 latte, you got to put some money back on there. Um, and then when you're sending money back and forth between yourself and others, that money gets deposited onto this virtual Apple Pay card, as opposed to going straight to any sort of bank account. And there are many reasons why that's done, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with regulations as well, because there's probably a difference between virtual debit cards and actual banks and all that jazz. But the fact is, it's a virtual card uh, that it works like a gift card balance where you got to keep the thing topped up if you want to use it to uh, buy and and uh, send money to your, your friends and family uh, using Apple Pay. That said, uh, it is one of the simplest setup processes that I've come across uh, whenever it comes to these sort of virtual bank account dealies. <laughs> um, and it's, I think, simpler and more available to uh, your everyday person as well, which means that it's a great way for me to uh, exchange money virtually with family as opposed to saying, now sign up for Venmo and then go here and enter these two values that get dropped into your bank account six days later and do this and do that and do this. That's much more complicated uh, than this setup process has proven to be. Yeah, I use um, Square Cash to to you know, I go out to dinner with friends and they, they pay for it and I just send them money through Square Cash or, you know, send my money, mom, send money to my mom for, you know, a, a trip we took together or something like this. Really, really easy to use. And and Apple Pay, I, I actually have literally not used it yet. I have it on my phone. It did roll out to me. But it seems just as easy to use as Square Cash and the setup process actually seems easier to use. Um, the peer-to-peer -peer payment, in my opinion, is what makes it special because when it comes to making purchases at a store, if you can only use your your cash, your, your Apple Cash card in somewhere where Apple Pay is accepted, why aren't you just using Apple Pay and your debit card or your credit card? With, why, why would you go through all the extra steps? That's how I feel about it. Um, so it's kind of unnecessary when going to a department store and paying for something using your your Apple cash instead of just using your regular wallet for, with Apple Pay. But peer-to-peer -peer, um, money transfers is where it, it, it will really shine. It, mm -hmm. if for anyone who has um, a, like a group of friends or family that use uh, iOS, it's going to be a great way to to share funds between between people. That's that's the the thing I'm looking forward to the most with it. I just yeah. sent you a dollar. <laughs> I just I just sent Larry a dollar and then I, and then I requested a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Two dollars. <Woo>! Yeah. <laughs> I want right. that dollar back. Uh, so, yeah. So that, wait, let me just do this process really quickly. It was pending. Oh. So. I'm going to show the screen. I don't think I'm showing anything that I'm going to cover up part of this text message. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so that's um, Serenity's uh, send, send and request to me. So I can accept the um, $1 <laughs> and then hit continue. Oh, I have to agree because I haven't done this yet. Okay, so it's sending up Apple Pay Cash. I told you I haven't, I haven't actually done it yet. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, in the meantime, we can talk more about it while it's setting up because it's not happening right away. But that's that's it. Like that's it. She sent me a dollar, and now Apple Pay Cash is setting up. So my mom, for example, I love you, mom. If you're listening, I'm sorry that I keep bringing you up when I'm talking about people that don't know how to use technology. But my mom, for example, I send her a dollar. Bam! She sets up Apple Pay Cash without having to do anything. And then now her and I can do peer-to-peer -peer transfers. So I finished the setup. So now um, with the money that Serenity just asked me, I'm going to just pay. And it pops up like um, in your 
app tray. And then I just hit the pay. I can change the dollar amount if I want to, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and I'm just going to pay her. Yeah, so it was really it was really interesting while I was I was kind of setting this up while Mike was talking. I'm like, oh, I'll use this as a, a live how-to. <laughs> uh, and it was really easy to set up until I tried to actually send money to somebody, at which point I discovered that, of course, anyone not on 11.2 just simply gets the sad message, this person can't receive Apple Pay cash at this time. Uh, but also, you get this message if you're trying to send Apple Pay cash to somebody who's not in the right country. <laughs> they can't receive Apple Pay cash. The nice thing with Square is like if I'm trying to get somebody to give me money via Square, even if they don't have a Square account, I just write in their phone number and then it's like, hey, Serenity is trying to pay you via Square or Serenity would like money from you via Square. Click on this link to sign up. Uh, and I'm kind of sad that that button is not equally there where it's just kind of like, hey, Serenity's trying to send you money via Apple Pay Cash. You need to update your address. Or Serenity's trying to send you money to Apple Pay Cash. Unfortunately, currently not supported in this in your country at this time. Like I, I really want more uh, more data, more mm -hmm. communication. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. A, a way to instead of just stopping you from sending it, a way to allow the person you're trying to send money to or ask money from to know that there's this thing called Apple Pay Cash that they can either sign up for if it's if it's available to them or um, you know just to let them know it's not in your country yet maybe it will be some other time you know tell tell your friend or your family member sorry I don't have it so let's do a different route or something like that. And Apple has a unique advantage here with it being sort of built in at the the base level to do those types of things whereas uh, third-party apps are going to be a little bit more difficult uh, potentially because then you know there's a, a external sign up process involved you might have to download an app you might have to do this that and the other here you get the right version of iOS and it's built in and like you like what just happened there whenever you tapped then you were able to just sign up and go through the workflow right there uh, there was no uh, okay, you know, you need to go download this app, and then you need to sign up, and then you need to put in this, that, and the other, and then you need to take a photo of yourself and uh, send it via Messenger Pigeon to the, the proper authority. <laughs> messenger Pigeon. <laughs> so I, I like, again, I like the simplicity here and the hand-holding, but I do agree that once uh, you run into an issue, there should be some more information about like, oh no, I can't send money, what did I do wrong? It's like, you didn't do anything wrong, you just don't live in the right place. Yeah. That is true. Lori, 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 we have to talk about Animal Crossing Pocket okay. Camp. Okay, we will talk about Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. I don't want to be like we, like we were with uh, Pokemon Go, which was a huge phenomenon we had every reason to talk about it constantly. So any haters out there, sorry, but Pokemon Go was a huge hit and there were lots of people that were interested in it. Um, uh, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is maybe a little less popular and I don't wanna go overboard with talking about it, but they, they pushed out the Christmas event, which we talked about last week, and then a couple of days later they pushed out a mini event, <laughs> which um, it was actually in celebration of adding four new characters uh, to the game um, so the mini event was that within seven a seven day time period, um, the the uh, the points that you earn to for your friendship levels, it you get an extra point for doing the requests and um, a couple of other things. Anytime you normally get a point, almost almost all of those times you'd get an extra point to add to their friendship level. This was a way to like. Um, raise the level of the, the new animal, the friendship level of the new animals coming to your campground so that you could welcome them to your campsite. But the really cool thing about it was that they did add four new characters, um, which are Blue Bear, Antonio, Phoebe, and Rattle. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think Rattle exists. I, I'm what? sure somebody's probably gonna tell me that that, that, that character exists in the, in the animal crossing world, but I've never heard of him or seen him before, and he scares me. <laughs> Micah, have you seen what he looks like yet? Uh, no, now I, I I have not seen, because I've seen the other new characters that are in there, but how's it, how's it spelled? R-A-D-D-L-E. 
Um, so Rattle, if I'm not mistaken, he is a frog, but the reason oh, I'm yeah. questioning that is because he wears a, a, a surgical mask yes. <laughs> over his what? face. He's horrifying. Yes. And he's like, he's uh, black and yellow and has these mm -hmm. creepy sort of droopy eyes. So I, I, I actually, I have had Rattle and Rattle wears this really cool uh, doctor's coat and um, I like got to the friendship level to get the doctor's coat. I was like, that's cool. I don't ever want to talk to you again, buddy. <laughs> I haven't invited Rattle to my uh, house yet or my, my camp yet because the things you have to build are like creepy mad scientist tools. Exactly. <laughs> like he wants like a surgeon's chair. I have like, it's, it's really funny because of how bizarre it is in this world of cute animals. There's this doctor with you can't see his face you know so it's kind of funny and unusual i think he's gonna end up be i've only come across him once in the campground um because you have to be level 36 before he'll even show up in your campground which is kind of insane that it's takes so long to get him um so then he did finally appear for me and i've talked to him once he doesn't say anything particularly unusual but i have a feeling i'm gonna end up liking him the most because he's so bizarre and creepy <laughs> i oh what's the the yellow elephant's name uh not are, are you talking about eloise eloise yeah, yeah or okay. whatever creature she is uh Eloise and I do not get along oh. eloise is so <laughs> rude all the time uh <laughs> Yeah, though it, it, it's so not to dwell on Animal Crossing Pocket Camp too long. The 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 campers will say rude things to you or say things like, "Oh, I didn't know you were a fan of mine," and so you're like, <laughs> half the time you're irritated with the animals because they're calling you a slacker or they're saying something like, "What do I look bored?" And then <laughs> the other half of the time you love them because they say things like, "The best day I've ever had. You're such a wonderful." person thank Aww. you so much and then so then you're like oh that's so sweet <laughs> constantly gaslit by these creatures yeah isn't that the opposite isn't gaslighting like saying terrible things that well, yeah that's they do. making they, you feel they do say terrible things <laughs> it's sort of like making making you doubt everything about yourself <laughs> like everything no. that you say is not true so you're a you good like... person mike <laughs> But my, but my animal crossing animals think I'm a bug. <laughs> the one that's there's one that's always like, "What do you want? What do you need right now?" I'm like, "I just want to be your friend." Uh. Yeah. Moving on to other apps and games that have come out this week because this was a big week for for new new games, new apps, or update big updates. Um, Serenity, I know that you've been playing Reigns Her Majesty. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it's basically taken up my morning. Um, I was a big fan of the original Reigns game, uh, and I was really curious to see what the company was going to do with a, again, a, a protagonist, a female led protagonist, uh, and how it would change the game. And what's interesting is it's not just a carbon copy of Reigns, right? You're not actually playing a ruler, uh, you're playing the ruler's wife in the same kind of pseudo medieval weird uh, atmosphere. Um, and you have a, a really smart story written uh, by Leigh Alexander among others. Uh, and actually the app store did an, a fantastic interview with, with Alexander a few, uh, a few days ago that I highly recommend checking out if you scroll back on your today screen. I don't think we can link to them directly, which is a, which is a pain because there's some really great content there. Uh, but what I really enjoy about the game is uh, it's been mentioned again that it's it's more socioeconomic than it is uh, of the old like oh we're starting wars and we're doing all this wars and the church and everything else are still mentioned but it's kind of funneled through much more subtle um, impactful changes which. Uh, in some ways made the game harder to play at first uh, because in the first game you could kind of judge. Uh, after a few plays, you know, oh, this card is probably going to help my religion score and really not help my, you know, my battle score. Uh, or this card is going to get me a lot of money, but maybe not uh, do me so well with the people. And these cards are a, a lot more nuanced. They they are a lot more prone to, I think, ambiguous decision making. Uh, where there's a card that sounds like it could be really great for your treasury, but it turns out not so much because of other factors. 
uh, and I like it. It's a it's an additional challenge. Uh, and on top of that, of course, one of the the big things, the the open secrets of Reigns, I suppose, is that it's a very strange sort of puzzle game. In addition to just being a, a game where you make decisions by swiping, you know, left or right, you're also playing kind of the meta game, uh, which is trying to solve this uh, your your poor kings or in this case queens. Uh, curse of basically living and dying and living again. Um, in the in Her Majesty, the curse is slightly different. It's not a curse so much as a, a blessing from from the All Mother. Uh, but the the same kind of principle applies, uh, where you have to use certain tools and sharp wood and paying attention to your surroundings and help you win kind of the the meta the the overall game uh, and that's like like the original reigns that is very challenging uh, I kind of forgot that when I first started playing this morning uh, and about halfway through play I'm like ah oh, I really I should have kept a mist notebook <laughs> I, I should have just uh, kept all of these things written down yeah. I'm sure Undoubtedly, there will be walkthroughs and tutorials that come out in the, in the following days. But I almost encourage players, before you go and cheat and find out how to like properly do all of this, play the game once through just to play it. Because uh, it's there's some really, really smart writing done. Uh, the decision making is really interesting. And as I said, I'm having a blast playing it. Uh, it's, is it's, is uh, Reigns Her Majesty playable without playing the original Reigns? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, that's an interesting uh, an interesting thing that you mentioned. The the two games in some ways aren't really linked at all. They might be linked in the end meta. I haven't yet found it out. Um, but you don't you don't actually get hints that the two games are interlinked. There's no, you're not actually the queen as referenced in the original Reigns game. Um, and uh, as a result, you get very little of the king. <laughs> he'll he'll occasionally pop in to say things or suggest suggest ideas, but mostly he just comes to complain and get about being hurt, <laughs> which I find hilarious. Or, I'm going to go avenge somebody, and you have responses like, have fun, baby, or uh, <laughs> suck it up, <laughs> which are delightful. That would be great. Yeah, I'm going to have to download that and play it because uh, it sounds really fun. That's um, it. It's a great one. And there's some uh, there's some other big apps that came out too, isn't that right? Uh, Daniel Jalkit's uh, Mars Edit, which I hasn't seen a major update in what seven years, just came out with a, a brand new version. Yeah. So what I actually don't I don't know really anything about Mars Edit. So um, maybe just go do a quick one, run through of what the basic program is, and then maybe mention the the updates. Yeah, so I mean, I think that the basic thing to remember about Mars Edit is it's a it's a way to make an easy blogging platform. Uh, so Mars Edit hooks into a bunch of other blogging platforms and allows you a nice way of posting without having to use necessarily the the web interface. Uh, does so it Del work? Sorry, sorry. Uh, does it work with um, like like high security uh, type? Blogs like you know, if you, for example, work for a company that has like huge, massive security, um, jump through hoops to to be able to log into, <laughs> um, will it will it work with that, or just is it really just for like the everyday person who maybe has a Tumblr or has a, a Blogspot or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on what the what the blog is. Um, in like for instance, Tumblr, of course, will you know that that will work. But um, Mars Edit has a specific compatibility list of like the blogging platforms and CMSs that it will support and the ones that it won't. So it honestly depends on whether or not your CMS has decided to support it. Okay, so then um, tell us a little bit about the update that's happening right now, or that just happened. Sorry. Uh, tell us a little bit about the. Um, Update four that just came out this week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think the the biggest thing is, of course, it's been the whole design has been refreshed a little bit. Um, the fact that uh, the pricing is a little bit different than it used to be. Um, so normally, Mars it's going to cost you fifty dollars. Um, although you can, you know, test the app for free. Uh, it just you won't be able to publish your your blog changes, which of course is maybe a little maybe kind of the point of the app. So it's it's nice to get a chance, a 
feel for the features without necessarily using it. Um, and then you can, I think, get a get a trial um, to to play around. But the the biggest thing I think is just the way that it's been refactored. Um, it's just a lot cleaner. It looks more like a, like High Sierra. There's been a lot of bugs fixed. Um, it's basically, as I said, it's a, it's a it's a great blogging platform for a, for a number of apps. So it's pretty cool. I like that it's um, taking on the Mac OS design. I think so, a, a, a few companies have kind of taken taken that into their their own app. Um, develop or their their own program development for for Mac uh, programs is that it, it makes them sort of compatible with with what you're already familiar with instead of trying to match up with you know some some programs that maybe used to be window centric that Mac users aren't quite as familiar with so it's good to hear that absolutely and it really is um, I used it again back in the in the Mars at three days uh, to publish to WordPress. Uh, and it looks to be just as easy, if not more easy, to to really factor it all in and uh, publish a a post pretty quickly. So again, if your CMS supports it, might be worth checking out and um, looking into it. And what's also really nice, of course, is that you can write blogs offline. Uh, so that's especially if you're writing for a CMS and you don't want to write in the CMS or save ten million text documents to your desktop before publishing. That's it. Might be a good alternative. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you also wanted to mention something about the new um, update to Carrot Weather, or is yeah. it? Yeah, it's it's now. So the update is that Carrot Weather is now on your watch, right? Carrot, yes. Yeah, so Carrot Weather's always been on your watch, um, but and the uh, Carrot Weather actually, Brian Mueller and uh, the genius behind Carrot has always been pretty up to date on watch software and just on general features uh, for iOS devices. But I really think he has gone above and beyond with the Carrot Weather update for for the Apple Watch and uh, WatchOS four, of course, and that it's. Carrot Weather has always been try, tried to do ambitious things on the watch. Uh, and in early days, that meant a lot of spinning, uh, or in Carrot Weather's app terms, uh, lots of rotating of the little colorful icons, being like snow, sun, moon, rain. Uh, so it was always a good a good weather app on the Apple Watch. And in fact, it was it was on our best apps list. Um, but this this generation of carrot weather, I think, has done a couple of notable things. One, the snark is on your watch in a proper way. It's not, you know, previously it was just a little bit of snark in a compl in one complication option, uh, but now there's actually a way to make the snark fully formed on your watch. Uh, so, for instance, if I if I go load up carrot weather right now, let's see what it thinks the the weather is going to be. Something. Uh, the UV index is high today, but hey, nobody lives forever. <laughs> um, oh, I burnt all of those beep talking clouds out of the sky. <laughs> I love it. So, so I I really enjoy carrot weather for the snark. So I'm really happy to see it on the watch. Uh, but the really cool thing, and this kind of takes a page from um, what David Smith has been doing with Workouts Plus uh, Plus, is that you can customize almost entirely the way that Carrot Weather looks on your watch. Uh, so right now, if I'm <laughs> trying to awkwardly yeah, show awful. this. This is, this is awful. So right now on my watch, uh, for those people not uh, listening to the video feed or just listening to the audio feed, I just showed the watch. Uh, I've got the current weather conditions, the current temperature in Fahrenheit, the current temperature in Celsius, a little dialogue of snark. Um, the high and the low temperature, um, the feels like temperature, and what the precipitation is currently. And all of those modules that I just mentioned can be changed inside the Carrot Weather iPhone app. That's cool. So you can change where those things are positioned and also what they're showing. If you care more about wind and barometric speeds rather than Celsius, you can change that. If you prefer instead of snark to have like minute by minute forecasts, you can change that. Um, in addition to that, of course, it has a, a really nice, it can go anywhere from, I think, five to 10 day forecasts now, although they, uh, Mueller does caution in the app. It's like, if you want a 10 day forecast, be prepared for your app to take just a wee bit longer to load, because uh, it does have to pull more information, of course. Um, and in addition, 
if you force press on the watch app, there's now a radar feature. Um, and that does require a subscription to Weather Underground through Carrot Weather, so that it's a slightly, it's a subscription tier part of the app. Um, but if you care about weather reactions, um, and specifically if you care about radar on your watch, I've used six or seven radar programs and all of them are garbage. And this is the first radar implementation that's fast and actually works on your watch. <laughs> so, uh, you know. I love that actually things. works came after fast, but yeah. <laughs> frankly, well, when it comes to because, watch apps, you know it's got to. You load up a weather app and it's so slow, you can't tell whether the thing is broken or it's right. just slow. <laughs> <laughs> Am I just waiting for you, or do you just not work? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Uh, so yeah, the app is phenomenal. Uh, not just as an example of what you can do on the Apple Watch, but also if you care about weather at all. It's uh, and especially because it uses dark sky by default, so you get dark skies really nice. You know, uh, up to the minute weather predictions on rain uh, just through Carrot. Uh, it's it just it makes the weather experience really really nice on on the Apple Watch. I think it's hands down. If I had to recommend one weather app for Apple Watch, it would be Carrot Weather. Nice. So Sounds yeah, good. it's been a good it's been a good week for software. Yeah, it's been a good week for software. Yeah. We don't have much time left, but do you want to try to squeeze in some uh, ask I more questions? A couple yeah, quick let's ones. Get some, let's get to the reader yeah. questions. Mike, what you got? Let's see. Ba -ba -da -ba. We have, oh, there are some people sharing tips. Uh, here is one. Tips are always good. Uh, this, is a, this is a question from at Matt Schuler on Twitter. Is there any way in iOS to use the delightful bedtime wake-up sounds in replacement of the regular alarm sounds, which are often much more abrasive <laughs> for the alarm function? <laughs> Well, maybe that is I just know ex bedtime. But I know go exactly ahead. what he's talking about. Yeah, I um, I use the bedtime sound um, as my normal six a.m. wake up for you know the regular workday. It is much more relaxing, and uh, sometimes I have to get up, you know, normal, or sometimes later. But I do have to set an alarm to make sure that I wake up. And so I, I just, instead of adjusting the bedtime timer because it's already set up for me, I'll set a new timer and wow, wow is like what happens to me. <laughs> and just, it startles me, it wakes me up, I'm terrified. Or even if you just wanna set an alarm, you know, just for, you know, to remind you to do something, you, there's unfortunately no way to switch that to the, to the polite sound that you hear in the bedtime. Um, alarm wake up sound. The only thing that I would say to circumvent it is just use alarm as your new new alarm every time and change it until yeah. you know it'd be great. You know, Apple, please give us more alarms because I really like that one. It's very pleasant and calming. It doesn't. Some people need a loud startle you out of bed alarm. I'm the kind of person that like I, I wake up pretty easily. So I, you know, if it's the sound of birds chirping wakes me <laughs> up. So I don't mind something that's soft and calm and kind of wakes me up comfortably. So so what I will suggest, um, if you do want to try and get the the specific bedtime noises, is that I would almost guarantee you that someone has ripped them and made them into mp3s on the web and you can add custom tones and we even have a how-to for that which we'll put in the show notes um but that's that's the best way i think since they're not in beyond the bedtime app if you're trying to use non-bedtime alarms for instance you maybe you have to wake up three times during the night um or you apps on the app store that are designed for those kinds of things that have really again soothing tones uh, so if you you find something similar that you might like it might not be the exact same sound but it might be worth checking out yeah uh, I'm right there with you and if you can't find them online for some reason uh, there is a very complicated process by which you can uh, get those yourself. Uh, you plug in your phone uh, to your computer and launch QuickTime and record your your phone uh, and then 
basically set up the alarm to play the the song and then you would have to strip the audio and then drop it into iTunes as a ringtone file and then you'd be able to have them but again it's very complicated and uh, it, it's likely that you could find them online which is much simpler than trying to <laughs> trying to go go and do all of that stuff. Uh, next question, uh, which I think is is funny because it's been asked to us about 1,200 times. So I'm just going to say this is from the 1,200 people on Twitter and an email. And it is, when is the Pr Amazon Prime Video app going to ship for Apple TV? Anyone Wait, when did answer? that question come out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the most recent one was just a couple days ago, but okay, uh, okay. of course we know at this point that it's out. Yes, I, I started using it immediately because I actually love the content on Amazon Prime Video. They have tons of older movies that I just love to watch and the, the, it's harder to find them through my streaming services that I have like on uh, Netflix and Hulu. So Amazon Prime's old movie con um, collection is incredible. And I have, you know, I have to switch back and forth uh, from Apple TV to uh, my, my Amazon Firebox in order to access it. And so I don't do it very often because, you know, it's all that extra work. And now that um, Amazon Prime Video is on Apple TV, it's so cool. I'm so happy that it finally came out. I know I'm, there's a lot, of, a lot of shade being thrown at <laughs> Amazon for taking so long. But for it's me, it's not a it was, great app, but it's an app. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was worth it because I can watch all my Amazon Prime videos on my Apple TV. And I know there's an issue with um, uh, the audio not not being a 5.1, but mm -hmm. I think that's an error that they're trying to push out. I don't think from I, apparently Amazon tweeted that it's supposed to support it. So I think that it's it might be a glitch that they're trying to work out, which might take a year. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so yeah, the app is not top tier. Um, but as Lori said, there is some great, great content out there, including uh, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which I have become obsessed with in the last week. <laughs> if you like Gilmore Girls and Amy Sherman Palladino, I'm just like putting plugs in for all the cool sh stuff today. <laughs> yeah, this, but, is, uh, a, this yeah. is a cool, cool stuff show. It is a cool stuff show. You know what? We're in the holidays. I feel like it's appropriate. But uh, but yeah, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is included as part of a Prime subscription, uh, and thus you can get it on your fancy new app for Apple TV. Uh, it's not that fancy. It's a really, really terrible app, uh, and probably web-based in some way, which is pretty horrific. What? Uh, but on the plus side, you can use that app on the third generation Apple TV. So that's a that's a bonus for old Apple that's, TV viewers. That's really good to know. I I think that's a question that a lot of <clears throat> people had is whether or not it was a an app or a channel. It, I think it's what they're called on uh, the, on uh, Apple TV three. So it's good to know that they can add that channel to their to their um, streaming set top box. Yeah, and and Serenity, I I'm, I think I'm gonna have to disagree with. Um, I like the uh, interface of the Amazon Prime app, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. a lot of um, a lot of these streaming services are kind of going up this this route where they're just sort of like you have to look at like row after row after row of names of of movies or TV shows while there's something else in the background that's maybe it's a moving image. It looks beautiful. The, those versions, uh, Hulu, for example, has that. It looks beautiful, but it, it's the worst in terms of trying to like discover content. So for me, the Amazon Prime video on Apple TV, it shows me rows and rows and rows and rows of pictures with with titles. I just scan through. I don't have to go through this long drawn out process of trying to like find things that are under different tabs. To me, I much prefer it just being a bunch of thumbnails that I can look at and scan through instead of a beautiful interface that has no usability. That's that's, that's kind of entirely my, fair. Yeah, that's that's kind yeah. of, that's my you're you're right. It's ugly, 
but the way the way I the way it's I it's functional ugliness. Exactly. It I would works. rather have I would rather have functional ugliness than beautiful, hard to navigate content. So that's that's my uh, my judgment on that one. <laughs> one last question. Uh, this comes from A V A Y K T M on Twitter. Seems like everyone can hear my conversation on my iPhone 7 during the phone call, even with the speaker off. Hopefully the speaker is off. It was not like this on iPhone 6S. Any suggestions? Well, that's actually a feature, not a bug. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, Apple did increase the and uh, improve the speaker quite dramatically with iPhone 7 and, and all of the iPhones after. Uh, so it actually uh, is quite a bit louder without necessarily having to crank it up to the maximum volume. What I would recommend is maybe trying to dampen down the volume a few notches and see if you can still hear the person clearly, uh, because you may just out of habit, and gosh knows I used to do this all the time, where I just crank it up all the way because I was so used to not being able to hear people in public spaces. Right. And at a certain point I realized, oh, I actually don't have to do that anymore, and in fact it's probably hurting my hearing. Uh, the other al alternative is also to use a pair of earbuds when you're chatting, yep. when you're chatting with somebody. That was going to be my suggestion. Uh, I think that's uh, your best bet if even at the lowest volume you are still worried that others can hear your call. Although I would, I yeah, I think um, the the thing to note is depending on how you have your your settings toggled, uh, the volume up and down buttons can do different things on your phone. So wait until you're on the phone call and then do the volume down button and that will change the the volume of the, the conversation that you're having. Um, so that way it'll, you should be able to turn it down and have just your ear hearing it and not the entire, <laughs> the entire population the surrounding The entire you. world. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> and on that note wow. um, yeah I think we will close out the iMore show for today uh, thank you all for listening as always and don't forget we now have a brand spanking new iMore video channel um, which Micah will drop a link to in the show notes uh, thanks very much to Mint Sim and Thrifter our sponsors for today's episode um, and thank you guys for, for listening and just for being awesome people. Uh, Laura Gill, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Abaholic on Twitter. That's A-P-P-A-H-O-L-I-K. And you can find me at Laura Gill at all other social things. And Micah Sargent. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Micah Sargent, or you can go to chihuahua.coffee, that's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A dot coffee for links to all the stuff. You can check out iMore Video by going to bit.ly, that's bit.ly slash iMore Video, all lowercase, all one word, to get right to our new YouTube channel. You'd be fantastic. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Saturn, S-E-T-T-E-R-N, as well as on imore.com and the podcast Query on Relay FM. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do.